Welcome back everyone to my let's play of Kid Icarus on the Wii Virtual Console. Last episode we finished up the Overworld uh, maps. Uh, we just have to finish the Overworld Fortress. So we're going to enter our Sacred Ward and that's going to put us right in the Fortress. And just like the first Fortress, we're going to have to uh, navigate through this kind of a maze and uh, find a boss at the end, defeat the boss, and defeating that boss will get us the second Sacred Treasure. So we just gotta enter these sacred wards here. Luckily, uh, in the original Nintendo version, uh, O's and zeros are really hard to d differentiate. But uh, here you can, the uh, O's are uh, much wider. So that 20 up there, uh, the 2 0, 2 0 in the first line. So here we are in the fortress here. And, uh, unfortunately, none of our special, uh, skills work in the fortress. I guess they figured it would make it a little too easy, but we're gonna get the map here, but we're never gonna buy a pencil and a torch. I said you need the pencil and the torch and the map to map everything out, but I said we don't need a map because I have the map here. So you got these shrum enemies. Now, we're supposed to go over to the left, but I'm going over to the right here just to get turned into an eggplant. So yeah, see, uh, if you get hit by one of those eggplants that those wizards throw at you, you turn into an eggplant. And while you're an eggplant, you can't shoot arrows and you can't use your hammers, so you're basically defenseless. You just have to dodge things. I chose to get hit by an eggplant because I wanted to show it off, and uh, in order to uh, turn back into your angel form, you have to visit the hospital. And it just so happens there's a hospital right here, so I figured, hey, I'll show off the eggplant curse and how to remove it. Because this is, uh, you know, right in the way, so. Or right on the way, so. There'll also be another hospital along the way. So this, uh, this fortress is pretty nice, and it has, uh, two, uh, two hospitals. And both ain't far out the way of the way you're supposed to go through the fortress. What isn't nice about this fortress is those, uh, spike traps that we just went through there. Yeah, they're really hard to get through without, uh, taking any damage. We got more eggplant wizards. I didn't like the way that those uh, things were being thrown, so I just retreated out. And uh, I was hoping for a high arc there. So they threw the uh, uh, eggplant high, and then that way I was able to uh, avoid them. So I want to wait until that guy, uh, once again, he throws the eggplants high. Because if he throws them just uh, straight or in a low lob, he could uh, hit us when we jump up to shoot him. Yeah, here's one of those annoying spike rooms. They're really difficult to get through going up. They're easier to get through uh, going down because the way that this, the spikes come out, their timing. But going up, it's pretty hard. You're usually going to get hit by one of them. But we have a hot spring coming up, so that's good. And we have uh, we saw a blue uh, 10 mambos earlier. They're only worth half a heart. We get some. The red ones here are worth uh, full heart. Full 10 hearts. Big heart. That's good. You don't want to destroy uh, these two uh, guys there, because then it's, it's tough to get onto that ladder. So we're going to just keep them there, stone statues, and climb up. We'll grab a few more along the way. So, Oop, and uh, we got hit by an eggplant. So, yeah, it didn't matter that I wouldn't have to show off that eggplant earlier, but I didn't know I was going to get hit uh, by an eggplant here. Now, we're lucky in this fortress, like I said, there's a second hospital, and that's along the way to the boss. So, it doesn't, it's not necessarily bad that we got turned into an eggplant here. It's bad because we can't defeat any more enemies and get hearts and get some more centurions to help us in the battle. Centurions, though, ain't as helpful in this battle uh, as they are in the last battle. Here's our shop man. Hey, we can still buy things in an eggplant, though. Too bad, like I said, I'm not using that, abusing that trick to uh, intimidate the shopkeepers. But uh, you can still intimidate shopkeepers even inside the fortresses here. Now, see, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, see, it's easier to avoid damage going down. Just because the way. And we got a hospital coming up here. Here we go. Now, if we get turned to an eggplant wizard after this. Or an eggplant by one of the eggplant wizards after this, then we're going to have to retreat back to this hospital. But luckily, there's only one more room with uh, eggplant wizards in it. Let's just take out these guys, get some hearts. 
we want to have, uh, by the end of the game, we want to have max hearts because hearts are one of the criteria to get the best ending. You have to have max endurance. We're uh, one uh, step away from having max endurance. We want to have max arrow power. We're one uh, step away from that. And then, like I said, we want to have maxed out hearts. And we also want to have uh, maxed out one thing so far. We have to get all the uh, extra special items. So you have to have the bow, the wand, and the fire arrow. So we've met one of the five criteria to get the best ending so far. The other ones, we're working on. Yeah, we could use, I guess, a credit card to buy some of that stuff, but... Nope. We're good. So luckily you just once said, wait until he throws it high. That way you're not... Fancy jumping into a low-tossed eggplant. Take your time. Once again, remember there's no uh, timer in this. So, you got these shrooms that have quite a lot of hit points. Now, whenever we get to a room that looks like this, that has those like um, Moai statue heads in them, uh, then you know you're basically next to the boss. So this is like a bit our last chance to get like another Centurion. But they're not really helpful against this boss. He draw. He's just a big snake that uh, jumps around, and yeah, the centaurians ain't too good because they they never fly high enough to avoid him. So, but luckily he's pretty easy to avoid ourselves. We basically just want to follow him around the room and uh, jump on the platforms. And depending on where he is on his jump, you can either go to the left of the platform, or the right of the platform, and that'll avoid him. So, like I said, he's coming over from the right, we stay on the right side. Will miss us when he's coming over to the left. Stay on the right side. Miss us again. And then you have to watch on the other side. When he's coming to the right, stay on the left. And if you take damage, it's okay. Uh, I took a little bit of damage because I'm in a hurry. Because at the beginning of Wall 3 1, we have a hot spring. So we'll be able to heal up uh, all our power and we'll finally get to see those uh, fire arrows come into play. So we're at level 4 right now, so every time we hit him, we take off 4 hit points. So he basically takes 50 hits to defeat. Same as what Twin Bellus took, but we only had power level 2 on him, so... Yeah, as long as you're powered up, pretty much, you know, most bosses are going to take about 50 hits. He's almost down. Down to 14. 10. 6. I'm just going to show off a little glitch here. If you duck down before the treasure chest appears, uh, when the treasure chest appears, it uh, just it makes a copy of your sprite. So, yeah, even though it looked like no treasure chest appeared there, an extra pit appeared. And we're so close to that uh, 200,000 points, which will get us the uh, final stamina upgrade, the endurance upgrade. So here's our hot spring. Once we get to the full health there, we'll have our fire arrows. See the little fire uh, ball appeared on Pitt's arrow. And that, like I said, just kind of wraps around the arrow, so it makes it a little bit, uh, the hitbox of it, a little wider. It's like the, uh, the wide beam in Metroid that they, uh, the spacer that they started in Metroid 2. Why didn't you beam? Let's take out these snakes and we're back to vertical uh, scrolling so we got these little cactus monsters there they are annoying when they appear on the clouds because your, your instinct is to duck their fireball but remember ducking on the clouds will push you through the cloud even though the cloud is thick uh, clouds are considered thin platforms so jumping on the uh, ducking on a cloud will make you fall through the cloud so the Armor there, uh, they're worth 10 points. They have those little eel eyes that come with them. Uh, you can defeat the eel eyes for one heart, uh, or just the eel eyes will automatically disappear once you collect the big heart dropped by the uh, armor. Once again, another bunch of tricky platform in here. This is where uh, feathers will come in handy too, so I actually end up using one of the feathers later. So it was nice to have some of those feathers in reserve. Oh, that guy saw us. This guy, if we wanted to, we could have just jumped onto the platform to the right of him, that little uh, donut, and just let our uh, orbs 
You could duck on that platform and let the orbs uh, take him out. Orbs are really weak though, so they don't do a lot of damage. But, you know, if you can hit an enemy uh, uh, from safely with the orbs, you can do it. So we got the fly plutons. Uh, they're easier than the uh, ones that jump. Because these guys, all they do is they just float back and forth. And they don't rush at you until you basically are on the same horizontal line as them. And then they're very easy to avoid. You just jump up, get on their line, lure them over, and then you just get out of the way. So snakes here. This is where like we can keep one of the hearts from the snakes. Uh, as long as one of the hearts is uh, still on the screen, a new group of snakes will spawn. They spawn in groups of four. So we can prevent them from falling on our heads by leaving one of those hearts there. You see, they didn't appear until that final part of here. And here's interesting me, the key paw, it's the only place in the game where this enemy appears. So, yeah. We'll get to see him again when we leave this, uh, this door. But just to be safe, uh, I'm gonna kill some of these cactuses here, these holo enemies. Because this is the, basically the last place where we can get a skill, uh, an hour upgrade, a power upgrade. So I just want to make sure I get, you know, a little extra points. Get those 20,000 points, skill points. And we did. So now we're going to claim our fifth arrow power up. And that is just another one of the uh, things that we need to max out. So we maxed out the items. We maxed out our arrow power. And when we go through this door, we're going to max out our endurance. Let's get another heart here. And all we have to worry about that is maxing out our hearts, because we got the three items already. So yeah, we're going to hit our uh, 20, 000, uh, 200,000 score here. That'll give us our final power up. So we got uh, 39 hit points. Every bar, uh, except for the first, represents seven. I mean, eight. The first bar represents seven. So seven, eight, 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 eight. So avoid. Don't want to touch those, uh, they're like, they look like upside down Metroids almost. We're actually going to meet another enemy here, uh, that actually looks just like the Metroids coming up. Makes sense, I mean, the team that developed Metroid also developed this game, and they both use the same engine. So, like, if you play Metroid and play this game, uh, you'll notice the pit, uh, our angel character here, and Samus, the bounty hunter in Metroid, they control very similar. Just let the Reapers come and finish themselves off on our crystals. This is going to take out those little snakes too. Make our way up. And a lot of times there's just going to be a lot of waiting around here. And here's those uh, enemies, uh, Kometos. And they basically, like I said, look like the Metroids. Luckily, they don't grab onto us and steal our life. This guy would steal our life, but we don't need to even hang out with him anymore because, hey, we already got the three items. So we're just gonna leave. And then he, you know, he makes fun of us. He calls us a weakling. But we're not bothered by him calling us a weakling because you know, we know we're strong. We already got all the items and we maxed out our health. We've got max arrow power. So yeah, there's no point in, uh... Now that guy, if you say you got your, uh... one of your items stolen by one of those Plutons, uh, then you can just, uh... win the item back rather than buy it back at a shop. But... You know, leave that guy alone. We don't need to buy anything. I may buy something later on, I guess, just, just to show off the credit card. See how that works. But basically, like I said, it just means you buy something if you don't have the money for it. And any money that you get will go off to pay that debt instantly. So we'll make getting the 999 hearts harder. Because the hearts won't count until we pay off our debt. And then we got this like gumdrop area. Start jumping on platforms that, like I said, right above there, it looks kind of like gumdrops. We're gonna get a new type of uh, octopus here, the Octos. They remind you of the Camelooses that were in uh, the Underworld. They get a little stronger though, but we're stronger too, so we can still take these guys out with one hit. Just like we were able to take out the Camelooses in the Underworld with one hit after we got our uh, arrow upgrade. 
least that's a good way to get uh, hearts, too. They spawn in groups of four. And uh, they won't spawn until uh, they're all defeated and all the hearts are gathered up. So they're like those snakes in a sense. Back to another merchant. Let's buy a bottle. And we could just stick around here and make him uh, reload his shop. Remember, if you stay in a shop long enough, uh, he will uh, restock. We could have bought another barrel there, but... Or another the barrel and the bottle. Yeah, there's no point in buying extra barrels. We only have one. We got that from the... Luckily from the God of Poverty room. We still have one more of them left in the game. On the next level. We will get a, another bottle. Really want. So yeah, unlike uh, the snakes, they uh, come in groups of uh, they come in groups of four, but they have uh, spawns of three, so you get twelve at a time. Uh, these uh, octos, they just keep coming. They'll just so it's a good place, like I said, to build up your hearts because if you defeat an entire uh, wave of them, you're gonna get forty hearts. And it's always good when you get uh, ten hearts from you know simple from an enemy that you defeat in one hit. And pretty much most enemies will fall to one hit now that we uh, have maxed out our power. Too bad uh, the final boss is so easy that it doesn't matter. You can beat her with the weakest power ever. So I make a little mistake here and uh, lose, a, lose a feather. But we should jump on that pink cloud to the left and then jump to the cl cloud on the left from there. But I uh, actually scroll off the screen to the right here. I try to make the jump from this side. But, yeah, I fall. But luckily, like I said, that's what the feather's for. Like I said, the feather grants you uh, a few uh, seconds of flight. And we just fly away. Speedruns can use the feather to, uh, whatchamacallit, to uh, speed up some rooms. And, ooh. We have basically down like one or two hit points there. We managed to get another hot spring. So we want to fill ourselves up because this hot spring is going to have to last us for the next level and for most of the fortress. Fortress is going to have a hot spring in it again, but it'll be deeper into the fortress. So it's a good thing we got the full life here so we can make it last. Hop on out. And we're almost at the end here. A few more Metroids and snakes to take care of. And I still got hit by the snakes. We don't have to worry about score anymore, so there's no more uh, life upgrades. So we can theoretically just speed through the uh, rest of the game, not kill any enemies. But we do want to kill enemies because, like I said, we want to get those hearts because we want to max out our hearts at 9.99 to get the best ending. This is where we'll uh, pick up in our next episode. I'm going to have to waste all my feathers here. That's the only bad thing about having a whole bunch of feathers here. I'm going to waste a whole bunch to... Like I said, what the sacred wards always account for the stuff you had when you entered the room. Or this level. So we'll have full feathers. But, yeah, had to finish off. Now we'll get our sacred wards. And we'll pick up uh, at this level uh, in our next episode. Take care, have a good one. Bye.